How to Recover from Trauma and Loss, Interview with John Callis. Have you or someone you know has gone through trauma and loss in life? And many people after that develop depression, anxiety, or behavior problems. How do you recover from such difficulties? Would you like to learn? Then stay tuned as our guest, John Callis, shares how he overcame his early loss and trauma after having some mental health difficulties. You're watching Happy and Healthy Mind, episode 98. And John, thank you for joining us today. I'm doing great. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you. So John Callis is an Emmy-nominated writer, director, producer with eight other award-winning productions. And he's an author of several books. He has appeared on Good Morning America, articles on Yahoo, Fox News, Digital Journal, The Good Man Project, and Medium. In addition to actively directing films and an active member of NAMI, he also coaches people overcome their trauma and live their best life. And I'm your host, Dr. Rosina Lakhani. I help compassionate high achievers achieve more, earn more, and make the impact they're meant to make without burnout and without losing their health or career. I'm an executive coach, corporate speaker, and an integrative psychiatrist. I believe that your mind is the software that runs for the hardware of your brain and your body. Therefore, I share practical tips for your mental fitness. If you need specific medical advice, please consult your healthcare professional. If you find this content helpful, then join our mission of eradicating preventable suffering by liking, subscribing, and sharing so more people can live and perform at their best with hope, health, and happiness. And so let's learn from our guest. So John, tell us, how did this topic become important in your life? It's important because I lived through it and I know what people are dealing with who are suffering and I know I can help them. So what kind of challenges were you going through that kind of led you to this path? Sure. Um, the difficult situations that I faced were part of the challenge, trying to understand whether or not my perception of the truth was the truth, or was there an alternative truth that I just couldn't see or wasn't willing to look at? And then I had to find steps to move my life forward. For example, the night before Thanksgiving, my wife broke her toe. And all of a sudden, I realized that the entire evening was put on me, and I panicked. I didn't know what to do. I started freaking out. And I, I had to calm myself down. I said, okay, so what are we faced with here? Is a really tough situation. Um, so I did a timeline because uh, as a director, you always work with time. And I thought, I'm going to start with what time I want to put the turkey on the table and back then from there. Then I realized that it was so overwhelming that I needed help. So I called my two adult sons and I said, look, this is what happened to mom. I need your help. And they said, what can we do? And the three of us put the Thanksgiving together and it was an amazing time for all of us. Wonderful. So like people face some difficulty and suddenly like, you know, they they become really overwhelmed. So you kind of step back and you apply some of the tools that you <laughs> that you have learned through the life. But earlier you were telling me that you went through quite a bit of trauma yourself, trauma and loss yourself in early life. So sh tell us what, what happened with you. Well, um, when I was three years old, my dad died. And naturally, I felt abandoned. Uh, I slipped into a, a deep depression. And later on in life, I became such a problem that my mom and stepdad sent me away to military school. And it didn't get better. I didn't heal. And by the time I was 15, I was so over the top that I decided to commit suicide by jumping into an icy lake. And as the water rushed into my lungs, I, I had this thought in my head that I really didn't want to die. And the message was clear. I wanted a better life for myself. So I had to start figuring out what that meant. And so then what happened? That, that sounds like, you know, you, you reached the peak of helplessness when you felt there was no hope and, and that led you to over there. How did you survive? What happened? Well, it took a lot of courage uh, to be able to admit that I had a problem. That was the main thing that I think in mental health people, especially men, don't do, which is to address that they do have a problem. Now, when I was growing up, there weren't all these organizations and people to deal with it. So 
it was really a grassroots kind of thing. And I decided to open up because a coach asked me if I played sports. And I said, no, because I never had a father. And he got that all out of me. And so I soon learned that what was important was to accept the help from others. And so mentoring became really important to me. Sports became important to me. And my education became much better. And I, I rose to uh, uh, an AB student. So I think all of those things started moving me in the right direction. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. But what what happened after, like, you know, you said that this water was getting into your lungs. You had this thought realization that you actually didn't want it to die. You wanted a better life. How did you get out of the water and how did you survive that phase? Well, it was cold because it was an icy uh, lake and, you know, it was a, a short dock. It wasn't like I was jumping off a 20 foot dock. It was a short dock off the lake. And I just grabbed onto the lake, uh, to the um, dock, I mean, and I pulled myself up and I sat on the dock just shivering. I was so cold. And I, that's when all these thoughts started hitting me. And I went back to my dorm and took a hot shower and, and tried to process what just had happened. Why did I try to kill myself? And I understood that it was the, 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 the insanity that was going on in my head and the self-doubt and the feeling I was unworthy and a failure. So all those negative thoughts were going on that led or led you to that point. And then you were able to become aware of those thoughts and you identified that what you really want is a better life rather than end of life. Sure. And so then you went to, to back to your dorm and started getting the help that you needed and that helped you survive. That's wonderful. And so I just want to remind people that no matter how helpless you may feel at times, you know, you need to recognize that there is a better life available and you can come out of it. So tell us like, you know, after you applied these tools that you learned in life, uh, how did your life change? What, what kind of thoughts, how your thoughts change and how your life circumstances change? after you changed that trajectory of your life? Well, I think what was important for me to realize is that life was only going to be the way I wanted it. And unless I took control of it, th there was going to be no hope. So I, I went for my master's degree in California and I wanted to get into the film business and I had no contacts or anything. And, and even at that, I started feeling like I was a failure and wasn't worthy of things. And then I had to stop that. I had to change my mindset and saying, you have got to stop thinking you're a failure and start looking at what steps you need to take to become successful. And I turned it around, became successful, and I found happiness, married this wonderful woman and had two kids. And my life has been absolutely the way I had always dreamed of, that, that I wanted it to be. But it really took an effort and a willingness to talk and, and get professional help. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. So I'm sure our audience would love to hear the tips and tools that helped you so they can also help themselves. Just before we go jump into that, I just want to kind of share my thought about the opportunity cost that would have costed you if you would have not heard that inner voice. So like you have, you had so much success in life you have probably on on the way helped a lot of people bring a lot of joy to people and all that opportunity that you had would have been lost if you would have killed yourself that day so it's not just the life is lost it's not the whole family would have been devastated your friends your colleagues all community would have been devastated but you would have lost this whole opportunity of life that you have been able to live. So I am so happy that you came out of that deep, deep, sad situation. So tell us if somebody is going through their own difficulties, what are some of the tools they can apply in their life right away? Well, I created a three-step life-changing uh, program called Uncover, Discover, and Recover. And what it is simply stated is you uncover the difficult situation that you're finding yourself in, which we all do. I mean, we all have difficult situations. Then you discover whether or not your perception 
of that situation is the truth, or perhaps there's another truth that you're not seeing. And once you get to that point, then you can start the recovery by taking any steps that are necessary to improve your situation. For example, I had a client that called me and she was in absolute serious crisis and she didn't know why. And, and she was so panicked. I, I was fearful for her life, to be honest with you. And I, I kept talking to her and talking to her. I said, now, look, you've been with me a while. I want to go through the three steps with you. And so we uncovered the fact that she was in crisis, but she didn't know why. And what we discovered by talking together over a period of time is that she never dealt with the loss of her mother. And she, her mother was her rock and stable, so she would always call her and ask her for help. And so she started asking me questions that she would have asked her mother, and we went through it. And then we decided on how she was going to recover from this by taking certain steps that would make her heal. Well, about a week later, I got an email from her saying, I cannot thank you enough. I feel like my mother channeled through you. And I am so grateful for this three-step program that you've created. And I'm using it now in every aspect of my life, which is what it was designed to. So I was very touched by the email. That's wonderful. I am so glad that she found you and she was able to apply that three-step program. It's so similar to the three-step that I use in my stress management program, and I call it CPR. So C is calm down and assess the situation. P is the process. Think what is coming from outside that is not in your control and what is in your control and then respond by focusing on things that are in your control to deal with whatever situation you're in. So coming from two different angles, but kind of very much aligned message. So wonderful. So if let's use some other examples and share if some of the audience want to apply these tools, let's go a little bit deeper in each of the steps. Of course. Um... I'll show, share another example. Another client of mine who read my book, uh, When the Rain Stops, found the three-step process, Uncover, Discover, Recover. Well, he sent me an email and he said, after I read your book, I literally went over to the phone and picked it up and called my mother, who I haven't spoken to in 10 years. And I'm forever grateful that she's in my life now again. And I owe it all to you and your program. And I can't thank you enough. Wonderful. So yeah, can you kind of go a little bit more in detail in terms of how do you uncover? Like, you know, you're just so overwhelmed in, in whatever situation you're going through. How do you uncover? Let's kind of go a little bit for the detail in it. Well, okay. So let's, let's look at uncovering. You know you're frustrated about something. You know you're having a difficult time. What I try to get people to do is say, all right, where was the last moment that this didn't have a trigger for you? Was it in the morning? Um, when you woke up, were you feeling okay? Yes. Okay. So you took your shower, you went to work, maybe yes, maybe no, maybe they went to the beach or something. And I try to find the place that triggered something inside of them. It could have been seeing a, a mother holding a child and they lost it because they lost a parent. Um, whatever it was that triggered them is what we need to do to uncover what the difficult situ situation is. Yeah, so many people don't even realize that they're reacting because of something got triggered in their mind. So you identify the trigger and then? And then we have to discover whether or not their perception of, of what triggered them in the first place was the truth, or is there an underlying theme that, that they haven't dealt with? Has this been a repetitive theme? Is it something about self-worth? Is it is it about lack of love in your life? Is it about enjoying it is it no way to talk about it fear of talking about it men especially have a fear of talking about it because we're brought up to believe we're men and we don't cry and now fortunately that paradigm is is changing and men are opening up more and more so we discover from the uncover what the truth is or at least the perception of the truth and then we have to look at it from different angles and start questioning whether or not that is the truth or is there something else behind it so can somebody do it by themselves or they need somebody to help them? Well, I think initially it's helpful to have me guide them. And then once they get the tool into their life, it becomes their own tool to work with. And they don't need me anymore because 
they have a tool to deal with things. So if they go into a situation they're uncomfortable with, they say, okay, I'm uncomfortable with this. I get it. What am I going to, what's the truth here? Why am I uncomfortable? Am I feeling insecure? Okay. Nobody in the room knows that I'm going through this in my head so I can relax. I'll take a couple of deep breaths. I'll find somebody I know in the room and go over to them and start talking so I can relax. And that's the part of the recovery. So once they embed it into their life, it becomes almost a second nature thing that they just apply and in, in any given situation. Right. Because people are used to thinking about certain thing in a way. And as they are challenging their thoughts and as they are learning to see the situation in a different way, sometimes they need help, whether it's you, whether it's one of the counselors or therapists they're working with, one of the coaches like me they're working with, or a really helpful friend, that trusted friend that can help them get through this phase because we we tend to kind of get stuck in our own patterns mind develops these pathways and so we start thinking in the same way over and over and over again and we repeat our trauma and we repeat our uh, like you said the patterns and keep on reacting and so when we start kind of discovering what could be the underlying reason for our behavior We can address that trauma. We can address that loss. Mm -hmm. And once we do that, then we can work on changing our behavior. And so so sometimes you need help in that process. But once you learn it and once you practice it enough, then you are able to apply by by yourself. And so then how do they kind of work on recover phase? Well, they get to work on themselves by using tools that we're talking about. And, and look, these tools don't work right away. They, they take some practice. They take a little understanding. And they also have to take extrapolate the idea that there's time in life that you're going to feel depressed. And you have to stop and look and say, am I depressed or am I just having one of those bad days? And allow yourself to have that moment. Don't try to bury it because it'll come up in some other form. So you have to allow yourself to have bad days. But what you don't want to do is stay in that space. So you have to change your mindset and find out what it takes to move you out of that space. If you're grieving, by all means, grieve, get it out as much as you need to talk about it, but also understand that the person that left you wants you to have a better life and wants you to live. They don't want you in the grave with them. So you have to find ways to solace yourself. And, and I think Uncovered Discover Recover is a great tool that changed many people, but when they applied it, Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I saw a patient yesterday and she had recently lost her father mm-hmm. and she was she was feeling so, you know, she was grieving, she was crying, she could not think about anything else other than her loss. And so somebody started music in her uh, home and she became really, really upset. Like, she, you know, it led to arguments like, how can you play the play the music when I have lost my father? And, and so she was stuck over there. And so as we, as we started talking a little bit further, it came out that she felt that her father would feel, you know, betrayed if she would start enjoying her life again. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was keeping her stuck in her grief stage. And, you know, so we went through our our own steps and the first one was, yes, validate because you have had loss. So you have to validate and you have to be kind to yourself. Yeah. And then you have to kind of start thinking, how, how would your loved one feel when they see you suffering? And so we talked about like, you know, not everybody believes in a soul and, but she was a spiritual person and she believed that in the journey of the soul. So we talked about if your father's soul is looking at you, what would make your father happy? Yeah. To see you breaking down, crying all the time and not moving on? Or would it help his soul to feel, uh, to see you celebrating the life and being happy? And and so it kind of really hit her. And, and uh, one of the points that really hit her was that let's say a parent or loved one's soul is stuck and watching over you before they can move on. So once they see you that you are doing okay, then they can move on in their journey. And so as soon as she realized that, okay, maybe my father's soul is waiting for me to get better so that he his soul can move on, 
that really, you know, help her realize that she she would like to start moving on in her life and send the prayers for peace for his fa- her father's soul. And that really helped. And so, yeah, like you, you're saying that once you realize, you know, what is the underlying reason, her underlying reason was that she felt that her father's soul would feel she's betraying him. Whereas, yeah, whereas actually it was the reverse where actually a father soul may be stuck waiting for her to get better so he can move on. Now, what you're saying is very, uh, it, it resounds to me very well because a few of the clients I had dealt with the loss, but they kept feeling like they were violating something by being happy. Uh, they, they felt guilty for being happy and laughing when they had lost someone. And I had to explain very much like you just did that the person who passed away wants you to be happy. They don't want you to feel guilty because there's nothing you can do about it. They're gone. So it doesn't mean you forget who they are. It doesn't mean years later, something's going to trigger you and you're going to break down and cry your eyes out. It's healthy to start laughing again. So you have to do things like that. Look at funny movies or talk to friends, dance to music, but you need to go on. And, And I love what you just said. Yeah, yeah, that's, thank you. And um, thank you for helping your clients because yes, it is important. And also I want to bring this point that everybody grieves in different way. Yeah. So some people may be faster, some people may be slower, some people may be crying, some people become angry. You know, those five stages of grief, when you have the initial grief, you go through the shock, this, you know, you're numb. Then you go through denial then you go through anger, then you go through depression, and then you come to acceptance. And sometimes people go back and forth. And, you know, when one, when one family member is lost, everybody's going through the grief Mm -hmm. in their own way. And sometimes it's just like not at the same stage. So people get frustrated with each other or start judging the other person that, you know, uh, how can you be laughing or how can you be watching or moving on? So we talk about celebrating life smile don't cry because it's gone smile because it happened yeah you did get this long opportunity to be with this person a great person and appreciate all the good things so celebrate life and send the peace prayer to the loved one and it that peace prayer also helps you calm down your inner uh, turmoil i know when when my mom died anytime i saw a picture come up I started crying like a baby because I missed her so much. And then it, about a year later, a picture came up on my screensaver of her sticking her tongue out at the camera. And for some reason, I just started laughing hysterically and remembering all the funny things she did. And, and it was a real cathartic moment because I had then transfer, transitioned from the anger uh, and sadness into remembering the happier moments. And, and that was a real relief for me. Wonderful, wonderful. So, John, we're having a really great conversation, but we're coming towards the end of time together. So do you have your best advice that we can you can give to our audience how to overcome the past loss and, and trauma? And if you're developing the, you know, what, how you develop the behavioral problems and depression and anxiety, how they can overcome it? Well, I think what's important to understand is that Honestly, life happens. There are going to be hiccups along the way, but truthfully, we can't let those things define or ruin our life and make us feel like we have to suffer. There is joy and there is happiness on the other side. No matter what you're dealing with, you can powerfully deal with it and get over it and find ways that work for you. No matter what it is, you have to find a way that works for you. And and if you do that, you'll find success, you'll find happiness, and you'll find peace of mind. Thank you. Thank you. So, John, if people want to learn more about you, how can they reach you? Well, they can reach me through my book, um, When the Rain Stops, which is on my website, uh, johncallis.com. And there's a contact sheet on my website to, to reach out to me, and I'd be more than happy to talk to anybody who's either in crisis or just wants to talk. Sometimes it's good just to check in and make sure your mind is healthy. So look forward to talking to anyone. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, thank you for agreeing to share your gift with our audience. And so John has agreed to share 
this three-step program that he just discussed, uncover, discover, and recover from any difficult situation. And you can find that uh, resource by visiting our website, happyandhealthymind.com. There's a button called resources. You click it and you will be able to download all the resources that our guests share. And if you are in US and you would like us to send you the link to the resources and the reminders for future programs, text the word joyful, J-O-Y-F-U-L, to the number 38470. And we'd be happy to send you these links to reminders and resources. So let me leave you with this message for today. Every day is a new day, new opportunity to make changes, to choose different path. John was at the rock bottom of his life. He was about to lose his life. And yet he was able to listen to his inner voice and shift the trajectory of his life, made a new choice. And that choice led to the opportunity of life, opportunity to help many other people in this beautiful life. And so you have this opportunity. What are you going to choose? Are you going to make the best out of the opportunity of life? Or are you going to stay stuck with past trauma, or past difficulties and the choice is yours it is hard but you can make it stay safe happy and healthy until next time dr rosina